Some of you probably know that we recently got a ton of new filament in the shop. So we got new sparkling PLA, magic PLA, mystery PLA, silk PLA. It's awesome. But now that we have that, I really want to do some tests on them and I want to see how fast we can print them and how much flow we can push through. So that is what we're doing today. And to start with, we're going to do our standard eco PLA. We're going to print at 0.2 millimeter layer heights with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And we're going to start at 100 millimeters per second and just see how far we can go before it under extrudes. Okay, so we are using the Cobra 2 Pro here, which has a high flow hot end. It uses a sort of volcano nozzle. I say that because it looks exactly like the volcano nozzle, but has this little thing at the top, so you can't use volcano nozzles with it. Uh, but that gives you pretty decent flow. And right now we're doing the test with the Eco PLA at 230 degrees. Uh, 0 0.2 millimeter layer height, 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle, starting at 200 millimeters per second. And then every few layers, we go up 25% until it just can't print anymore. Okay, it's gone up by 25%. Okay, up another 25%, still looking okay. And then we're getting some under extrusion now. Okay. So we got up about three steps of increased speed, which means it was about 350 millimeters per second when we were printing, which according to our flow rate calculator gives us about 28 millimeters cubed per second. That's at 230 degrees. But that's not the most accurate way of testing the flow. Uh, so what we're going to do now is do a more precise flow test, uh, which we can start at about 25 millimeters cubed per second and work up from there. Uh, yeah, so let's get to it. Well, can you guys hear that? That means we've hit our limit. The stepper motor and the extruder gear can't really take it. Okay, that's a good time to stop the test. Okay, so we've done this test before, but just in case you're not familiar with it, this is done by a CNC Kitchen. All we're doing is printing at a certain flow rate for each sample here, and it will go up two uh, millimeters cube per second for each sample. What we do is we start with the control, a relatively low uh, flow rate one that we expect will be totally fine and then we weigh that and then we weigh the others and compare the difference as soon as it starts losing weight that means it hasn't extruded uh, all that we wanted it to and then we can tell where it under extrudes and from that we can say the maximum flow rate okay sample number one 0 0.6 grams Kind of where it started under extruding and it's going down quite a bit now so let's do a little calculation so want to take a guess so pla doesn't have like the best flow rate of all it's the most commonly used one so this is the one that we pay most attention to but abs is actually better in terms of flow than than pla plus the pla you have to worry about cooling and, and, and everything but we did the test and we started off with a flow rate of 20 millimeters cubes per second and each sample was two and we got down to where it starts to under extrude more than 10%. That's sort of the limit. Anything more than that is just, it's gonna affect quality. So 10% comes down to our sixth sample at 0 0.53 grams, thereabouts, which is 30 millimeters cubed per second. So I can say that this Eco PLA can be printed up to 30 millimeters cubed per second. So, which means if you were printing at 0 0.2 millimeter layers with a 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle, you could get up to like 360, maybe up to 380 millimeters per second, which is okay. Now, while you can push this filament up to that flow rate I mentioned, I actually wouldn't advise it. This is the absolute max for this filament at these settings on this printer, and you might have different results on your printer. This goes for all the tests we'll be doing here. 
If you are using a printer that is similar to this, I would say printing at 28 millimeters cube per second would be totally okay, as this was the max we got before under extrusion started. And this is PLA, so we're looking for best visual quality. That said, you can get away with some under extrusion. As I mentioned before, 10% would be the absolute limit though. Even that is pushing it. So for the sake of paranoia, I wouldn't recommend printing at over 5% under extrusion. Printing a bit cooler also changes the max flow. At 215 degrees, which is a pretty optimal temperature for most PLA at higher speed, we get about 25 millimeters cube per second before we hit 5% under extrusion, which is quite reasonable. And just to compare to other PLA which label themselves as high speed or high flow, Polysonic PLA can get up to 30-ish millimeters cube per second, and Eson HS filament can print at 27. Of course, there is more to it when it comes to highest visual quality, but I'm still pretty impressed by these results. So why can't we print faster with this? Well, there are several reasons. One, the temperature might not be high enough. Now we're printing at 230, which is pretty high for PLA. We could go higher, but then there's a risk of stringing. And as you can see, uh, we already have a little bit of stringing in the test. If we're doing something more complicated, then there would be issues regarding string. Other reason why it's not going fast enough is because it doesn't have enough time to heat up in the hot end. Now we're printing this at 300 millimeters per second plus. It's going pretty quickly. It doesn't have that much time to heat up. What you could do is get a high speed filament like Polysonic or Eason's HS filament. And that has higher conductivity. It will actually absorb heat more. You could also change this with a, a hardware upgrade. So if you want to have a higher power heater cartridge, there will be more heat being generated and it will be able to print a little bit faster. You could also use something like a CHT nozzle. This uh, divides the filament up into three strands when it enters the nozzle and it heats it up quicker because of that. So you could get higher flow if you're using a high speed filament or if you had some hardware changes. Okay, time for sparkling filament. Wherever it may be. There it is. So this is basically like our Eco PLA. The only difference is it does have some glitter particles in it. I expect the flow rate will be very similar because of this. Our sparkling PLA came out pretty similar, just a tiny bit lower than our Eco PLA. 26 millimeters cube per second is good for 230 degrees, and then there is a rather sharp dip at 28 millimeters cube per second. For more realistic temperatures, 22 or maybe 24 millimeters cube per second seems to be a good bet. Okay, next up is our silk filament, and I'm a little bit nervous about this because silk and satin filaments tend to have pretty low flow. Our last ultra satin filament kind of maxed out around 250, but this one is different. This has a relatively low processing temperature. It's actually 180 to 210, whereas our ultra satin was like 220 to 225. Uh, so I have higher hopes for this one. Let's give it a shot. All right, at high temperature, we got up to about 28 millimeters cube per second with our silk PLA, which is pretty good, but hey, that's high temperature. A more realistic 210 degrees gives us about 24 millimeters cube per second, which means printing at 300 millimeters per second at 0.2 millimeter layer heights on a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. That's totally doable. So next up is our magic and mystery PLA. Not so much a mystery because this is basically just silk filament. So I think it's going to be quite similar to our silk. Bit of a surprise here. I was expecting our magic PLA to be pretty similar to our silk PLA, but it was in fact lower than that. At high temperature, it went down quickly. I really wouldn't recommend anything over 24 millimeters cube per second here. At normal temperatures, 22 would be best. And our mystery PLA was pretty much the same, 24 millimeters cube per second at high temps and 22 at lower temps. Okay, next up we are doing ASA filament, which I'm not really sure about because I've never ever done a speed test with ASA. I imagine it's gonna be quite similar to ABS, so it should be relatively high. So let's see what happens.
ASA was actually also surprising. At higher temps, we got about 26 millimeters cubed per second. I was expecting a higher result actually. And at lower temps, 24 would be the maximum. Okay, next up is our ABS filament. I'm pretty sure this will be the highest of them all, but we shall see. I like ABS because it, it does have really good flow. Let's see what happens. Again, surprising results with the ABS. Higher temperatures got us to about 27 millimeters cubed per second. Actually, we was expecting better results with this one, and at normal temps, we got up to about 25 millimeters cubed per second. And normally, ABS is better than PLA in terms of flow. I'm not sure whether to be disappointed in our ABS or impressed with our PLA. Okay, next up are our PETG and PCTG filaments. So PETG, I expect, will be a bit lower than ABS. Never done a, a speed test on PETG, but PCTG, which is very similar, it runs a bit hotter and it has much higher impact resistance than our PETG. I don't know, that, one, that, one's, that one's a bit of a mystery to me. I'm not sure how well this will do. Let's see what happens. PTG was as expected. At higher temps, we got about 25 millimeters cubed per second. But what was surprising was that at lower temps, we got very similar results. I actually did this test a couple of times because I thought I did something wrong, but same results both times. Strange. PCTG was quite similar to PETG, 24 to 26 millimeters cubed per second at 260 degrees. I guess no real surprises there. Okay, our last one is TPU, and I'm not really looking forward to this one. So the issue with TPU is, well, it's flexible, so there is a risk that it will get tangled up in the extruder gear because it's soft and it deforms when it's being pushed, obviously. But, you know, a couple of years ago when we didn't have printers that were so high speed, the recommended speed of these was like 40 millimeters per second. And things have obviously changed. And on a lot of TDSs and info sheets from film manufacturers, you still see the same recommended speed. But I've been printing our TPU at 100 to 200 millimeters per second without any quality issues. So I don't know. I've never done a max speed test. Let's see how it works out. I'm intrigued. Uh, TPU. So I feel this was the hardest test to get right. I did a high temp test, a low temp test, and finally a really slow test. And the first two were not really usable results. The final test though was more realistic, but I'm still not very convinced that this is accurate. We got an optimal limit at around nine millimeters cubed per second, which means a top speed of a hundred millimeters per second with the hardware and setting specs we mentioned before. Seeing as I commonly print this filament at 150 millimeters per second with good results, it doesn't seem that reasonable, but maybe this says more about the printer and its extruder than it does about the actual filament. Well, let me know what you guys think about that. Okay, there you have it, the speed and flow tests for our most common filament. Of course, there is more to it than that when you're printing, you don't need to think just about speed and flow, cooling, pressure advance calibration, input shaping calibration, these all come into play. But hopefully this does give you a better insight into what value you should put for your max volumetric flow rate when you are setting things up in your slicer. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you found this interesting, then let us know in the comments below. And if you want to join us on our Discord server, the link is down below. And we'll see you guys next time. Later.